Now, the plant-based sector is still a new investment space, yet we can see a whole array of new companies beginning to IPO, and really there's no end in sight. And this is positive in many ways. But when it comes to being a plant-based company then, and if you're invested in it, then it's important that that plant-based company has an edge, right? An advantage, especially if they want to last long-term, right? So the question is, if the Very Good Food Company, aka the Very Good Butchers, has what it takes to remain here long and even do they have what it takes to become a 10x company now that's what we're going to talk about here on the plant stock channel now if you're new to this channel welcome if you're not then obviously welcome back as always i would truly appreciate an early thumbs up because it really helps spread the channel to more people out there and if you haven't subscribed yet i would encourage you to think about doing that if you're interested in companies like the very good food company tattoo chef beyond meat and only to name a few and if you do make sure to not only subscribe but push that bell button thank you folks i truly appreciate your help so i know it's been a while since i covered the company very my berry on this channel and that's why i thought today would be a good idea to continue on the five criteria series that i actually started way back in january and the last video part three was actually done in the end of january so this is about time right and a few months ago i still remember richie one of my subscribers my pal he actually asked me when is the next part coming when is part four coming in this series and i gotta tell you richie it's coming now man so for those of you who are new to this channel you might not know that for me to be able to see a company being a 10x company or maybe even a generational company it has to meet five criterias now those criterias are one does it have a grand vision two do they have a superior product three do people love their product it's not enough to have a superior product people really have to rave about the product right and four what we're going to talk about today do they have an advantage or a couple of them and five which we're going to talk about soon is do they have a strong ceo and a strong management team now, if you haven't seen part one, two, and three in this series, make sure to take a look at them in the description and in the end of this film. So does the very good food company have an advantage? And I would say one advantage that they do have, or maybe two, is their products. And we talked about that before in their in the second criteria, which is do they have a superior product? And it actually has to do with their advantage as well. Now, obviously, when we're talking about do they have an advantage to traditional foods like meat and dairy, then, yeah, I think it's a no brainer. And we've talked about that many times on this channel, why that is. But when it comes to other plant based companies out there, then, yes, in many cases, I do believe they have it. Now, as we talked about, when it comes to their products, their meat alternatives, right, which they're right now still most famous for look at the ingredients list here right the first three ingredients as we talked about is basically what it contains most of so this is just wheat gluten onion organic black beans and then the list goes on organic mushrooms barley apple juice organic carrots organic beets water and so on right so it kind of shows us that this is kind of a whole foods approach that they're using and i think that's quite superior that's an advantage when it comes to a lot of other products out there as we've talked about before when it compared to a large company like beyond meat and it's the same with impossible look at their ingredient list water is the first ingredient then pea protein expeller pressed canola oil refined coconut oil and rice protein and so on and so on so from a health perspective these are quite inferior compared to the very good food companies meat alternatives right and then we have another company that's really popular now is probably going to grow really well and that's the tattoo chef and usually they're not that famous for their meat alternatives as of yet because they focus on a whole foods approach with most of their products also but not maybe when it comes to their meat alternatives and if we take a look at the products here uh their plant-based pepperoni first the ingredients when it comes to the uh, cauliflower crust it's pretty decent i would say but when we come into the actual meat here the vegan pepperoni water tapioca starch coconut oil pea protein i said canola oil rice starch so not so impressive when you compare it to very when it comes to the specific meat alternative right so when it comes to other plant-based companies out there what i've seen so far let me know down in comments if you know of any other company that has a meat product a plant-based meat product like this 
that is actually this healthy from a whole foods approach so let me know if you've seen that but i think that's a clear-cut advantage but the very good food company also sells other things and especially now that they've started selling cheese alternatives now they have several different to choose from but if we just take a look at one of them they're bold cheddar cheddar fort <laughs> uh, its ingredients list is cashews fault filtered water organic coconut oil organic chickpea miso chickpeas rice kojis nutritional yeast i mean that looks pretty whole foody also right whole food is a new word that i actually invented at the moment now if it wasn't for the organic coconut oil i would say this is basically a whole food here uh, or a whole food product but if we compare it to another really popular company which is daya and they're really known for their dairy alternatives right uh here it says the number the first most trusted the number one trusted by americans in 2021 so it says a lot right they're very popular uh, but what do they contain well if we take a look at their ingredient list here filtered water tapioca starch expeller press canola and or safflower oil coconut oil inactive g's pea protein so not a whole fruits approach there right not a healthy alternative and just for good measure, I thought we could compare it to another company that we talked about just recently, which is Nabati. And they kind of have a whole fruits approach when it comes to their famous cheesecakes, right? But what about their cheeses? Well, this contains filtered water, organic refined coconut oil, red peppers, organic tapioca starch, kappa carcinogen. Uh, and I mean, not half bad, but still not at the same level, I would say, from a health perspective as the very good food companies so when it comes to the very good food companies the very good butchers products they seem to be well ahead of their competition when it comes to a health perspective now obviously it has to do a lot more than that it has to do with branding has to know about people knowing about you but i think they'll get there soon folks let me know has any one of you tried these products right what do you feel about them when it comes to their meat alternatives when it comes to their cheese alternatives let me know down in the comments i'm interested to hear now i've talked about that several times on this channel i do believe that this is something people are going to care about more and more with time right people are going more plant-based or going to eat more plant-based in their lives whether they become fully vegan or not and i think with time it's going to become more and more important especially for the gen c generation and the millennials right they're already more interested about what is more sustainable what is healthy right and when it comes to obviously comparing then a burger from impossible burgers or beyond meat and then you go to be to the very good food company and you compare them from a health perspective it's a clear cut thing that obviously various products are way healthier and i think that is something that's going to make this company much more well known that when people find out that their products are way less processed it's healthier for it's better for you they might move on to these kind of products more right uh but that's not to say and i've talked about that several times that beyond meat won't come up with products that are healthier for you with time but right now they have an advantage and even though that the very good food company is way smaller than the Tati Chef and definitely than Beyond Meat, I still think they have, in a way, an advantage when it comes to a lead compared to several other plant-based companies that have actually IPO'd in the last year or so, or probably will IPO now in the coming year. Because we can see that they are expanding quickly, right? They're really growing their brand. And that gives them an advantage as well. But also when we talked about many occasions here on the channel is their facilities right they used to have one facility that they could actually produce about 1 million pounds of meat alternative per year now they open up the rupert facility a couple months ago and they expect about 37 million so that's a 37 x right and then as we know that in the end of the year they're actually starting to open up their patterson facility in california right that's about to produce that could produce at max capacity about 98.5 
million pounds and that's huge that's a, another 100x right it might take a couple of years before they're at that capacity but it's still an advantage compared to a lot of smaller companies out there because that means that they are ready to meet the kind of demands that actually comes up with the years ahead right without having to find a new facility being ready right now now i know that some of you might be worried about what's going on now when it comes to their financials right just a couple of weeks ago, they came out with that they've just gotten a loan for about $70 million, which they're going to pay back within two to three years, I think. And then they actually started diluting their shares as well, I think getting another $20 million. Uh, and for me, that's a good sign because that means that they're, they mean business here, right? And they're using that money, obviously, to expand in California and probably also uh improving the rupert facility and they've talked about that they want to get into europe so i think that's what you need to do if you want to expand rapidly but i do understand that you're worried about that folks let me know down in the comments is this something you're worried about the dilution and the loan but as we talked about many times on this channel this is something you have to do if you want to grow quickly right if you want to get out there before others like beyond meat has been doing all these years they've been at a loss for many years and they have taken a huge loan now also about 1.1 billion dollars and then we have tesla that's been doing the same thing for years and years and now finally they're actually making a profit and that's what it takes to be one of the best in the business so for me this is something i support and i think it's a good idea and finally, I think there's another advantage they have compared to other plant-based companies out there, and that's that they actually have their own restaurants, right? I think they have about two restaurants now, but with time, they're planning to open up several new ones in North America and the US, but also talked about when it comes to their vision to open up several in different capital cities of the world, right? And that's not only because they want to improve their revenue it's probably the smaller part right because i think their products from the facilities and online business is going to sell like crazy with time but mainly as being a flagships and ambassadors of the brand right so what do i mean by that well when a person gets into these restaurants let's say a restaurant like they talked about could be in tokyo in the future right the person goes in there trying their very good butcher's burger or taco stuffers or their sausage or whatever they're gonna have for them right and they feel like this is a great tasting product right and it's healthy for you where can i buy this right and they'll hopefully be able to buy this in a store close to them or order them online so i think working as ambassadors getting that brand knowledge out there that's key right so so far we've talked about four criterias right out of five we've talked about do they have a grand vision they do do they have a superior product in many ways i say i would say they do third do people love their products what we've seen so far it seems that way and four do they have an advantage and i would say their biggest advantage is their products at this moment so yes right now it does look like they have what it takes to become a 10x company and maybe more now that leaves us for the last one is do they have a strong ceo and management team and we're going to talk about that next right but for now, folks, that was it. I truly hope you got a lot of value from today's video. And if you did, make sure to smash that like button and help me out. And if you want to keep getting more information regarding the very good food company, Tattoo Chef, Beyond Meat, Oatly, to name a few, make sure to subscribe and don't forget that bell button. Thank you, folks. As always, I really appreciate your support and help. And don't forget to always do your due diligence because this is not financial advice. These are just my opinions and thoughts always important to invest safe folks hope to see you soon peace out